The final race of the 2023 Idemitsu Asia Talent Cup season has arrived as the riders get set to tackle the Laseo International Circuit for a second time this weekend. Here is what happened yesterday evening under the famous floodlights here in Qatar. It quickly became a three rider fight for victory between Adaki on the 14, Pratama the champion on the number seven and Ogiwara on the number 16. The lead was changing lap by lap. It was a fantastic race between the trio at the front who set a blistering pace. No one else was able to get anywhere near the Mazawa who eventually finished in third place and you'll see why in a moment. Finished a good five and a half seconds back. This is what happened though at the final corner. Three abreast into turn 16. Adaki up the inside, thought he'd got the job done, but then that happened. A high side out of the final corner for the Japanese rider, and this is what it left. Pratama cruised past Ogiwara on the number seven machine to take his eighth win of the year, a record-breaking eighth win of the season. Ogiwara finished a close second, as you've just seen there, and Shinya Azawa claimed third place, benefiting from Adaki's last corner, last lap fall. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the final race of the 2023 season. It's absolutely flown by, hasn't it? I'm sure you've all enjoyed it. We have a champion already, of course, in Veda Pratama, but there's still plenty left to play for today. Second in the championship is not done and dusted. There is 11 points between second, third, fourth, and fifth. Fuetizan, Adaki, Matani, and Ogiwara all hoping they can claim the silver medal in 2023. And of course, as you can see, on your screens there. Different conditions than we had yesterday. A slightly earlier time. The race is going to get underway in around about eight minutes or so. And yesterday it was under the famous floodlights, which, Fran, is always good here at the Sail International Circuit. It's one of the main reasons why we love coming here. The layout's good, but under the floodlights is just that much better. Good to see you again, Fran. I'm sure you're looking forward to this one. I am indeed, yeah. That was a very sudden segue. Good morning or good afternoon, in fact. Uh, and certainly good afternoon, good evening for those of you joining us from many of the nations watching your very own competitors in the ATC today. So there we have then the champion, as Elliot said, already decided this season. It's been an incredible run for the number seven, Veda Pratama from Indonesia. A record-breaking eighth win. We debated yesterday whether the full set for Tayo Furusato in 21 or eight wins in a season with more races, which one was the bigger achievement, but both incredible, of course. And uh, yeah, Pratama has looked like really the class of the field in plenty of races this year, but yesterday did have some close competition from uh, those who've been using him as that benchmark to try and home in. And yeah, it was a very dramatic end to that race, wasn't it? And a great battle throughout as well. Let's see what those on the chase have learned from it. Obviously reset overnight, a little bit of time to look through maybe where they were losing out slightly to those three who did certainly have the speed, if not Adaki sadly, actually getting the podium finish. Um, so yeah, it'd be an interesting one, I think today. What are you, uh, what are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking exactly the same. Um, as a neutral's perspective, I'm hoping we get similar yesterday and if not a few more riders involved. Like you say, they'll have gone home overnight, back to the hotel rooms and back to the Age of Talent Cup paddock and gone over what they could have done better, uh, learnt some things from the faster riders. I was going to say, when you said gone home overnight, I was like, bit of a trip. <laughs> it for, would have been a bit for, of a trip. For, for right, everyone yeah. except Hamad Al Sahuti, of course, <laughs> local hero on the grid this weekend. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be, I don't know, it's also a different conundrum, like you said, very different conditions, different time of day that we're racing. Yesterday was the first time ever we'd seen the ATC race under the floodlights here at La Salle, as it was in the middle of the, uh, I was going to say the calendar, maybe a little bit extreme, the middle of the schedule yesterday in terms of track action, and today they kick us into gear for what will surely be an awesome day of racing. But yeah, sunshine, quite a lot of sunshine as well. It's warm, but not crazy crazy hot uh, certainly for us obviously used to a little bit cooler climbs um but yeah i think it's going to be quite interesting because that should uh, should be a whole other challenge as well what they could have learned from yesterday's race of course there is that extra thing to think about with the conditions being different but what did we see in qualifying what we saw in qualifying, Fran, is Pratama, as he has done a few times this year, set the pace and set it very, very well indeed. 1.2 seconds was Pratama's advantage in qualifying. A 211.942 was his lap time, and no one else got in the 212s, let alone in the 211. So Pratama, a dominant display 
on Saturday. But of course, as we saw in the race yesterday, and as we've seen a lot this year, qualifying isn't necessarily um, all it's made out to be. Of course, they want to qualify as high as possible, but the times can be a little bit skewed and a little bit misleading. Um, as we saw yesterday, the three riders, well, two of the riders went with Patama Ogiwara and the Daki on the number 14. Here, rolling up to the starting grid. And Nazawa tried yesterday. This is a replay of what happened at the final corner. Fran, how, what did you make of that? It looked like Adaki just maybe went onto the dirty part of the track Possibly, on the inside. Yeah. You and can then just see the rear slide, can't you? Just lose his grip just enough to throw him off as well. Uh, I'm sure with just a few centimetres difference, he might have been able to save that. You can just watch it go there. It's not a massive high side, but obviously, sadly, a massive consequence in terms of his finishing position because he wasn't actually able to get it restarted and head over the finish line either. So after such a long race of hard work, um, yeah, bit of a bit of a tough pill to swallow there. But one thing we really love Adaki for always anyway is that willingness to attack. So hopefully we'll still get some great moves from the number 14 today and he's not going to be too nervous of trying it again. But yeah, I mean, obviously... It's an interesting one, isn't it, the final corner here? Because I believe yesterday in the sprint, the winner of the sprint, if you've not seen it yet, the MotoGP sprint, I won't spoiler it, um, but the uh, the race winning overtake was in the final corner, I believe. In the and sprint? He, yeah, and he made it work. Uh, obviously, the other times we've seen famous Lucille final corners, we've seen Mark Marquez very much not able to make it work as a... Uh, Davizioso stayed nice and calm and collected and still took those wins. So it's an interesting one, but Adaki not quite able to save it and sadly, like we said, losing out on that podium chance. But great speed throughout as well. So I'm sure he'll be in the battle at the front again. And let's see if the likes of Ryuichi Takahira, as you can see, Japanese rookie on your screens now, starting from the second row. Let's see if he can move forward a little bit as well. There were some fairly big hitters in that second group who've been more used to fighting in that podium battle. Uh, the likes of Takahira and um, Perfect Segre as well. <laughs> Puerto San as well, the tie rider, as you can see there, already a winner as well, four podiums. So yeah, I'm sure they'll be wanting to bridge that gap today. And the other conundrum here is always the long main straight and that slipstream. If you can stay in the postcode of a rider who maybe still has a bit of an edge and pace if it is something like qualifying, but if you get that slipstream in the race, you can just keep yourself in there and uh, yeah, watch the laps tick down, try and tuck in and then see what you've got in the final few laps. No podium in the last two for Puetazan, the tie rider, but he did move up to second in Bringing the overall standings. Bringing him down standings. to earth there quickly, wow. <laughs> he did finish second in... Sorry, he finished... He is second in the overall standings now after Adaki's crash. Four points between them. Puetazan on 141, Adaki on 137. Matani is fourth in the overall standings on 131, and Ogiwara is on 130. 11 points, as I said earlier, between second, third, fourth and fifth in the championship chase to try and finish runner-up to Vader Pratama, which this year will be um, a very, very good accolade to boats because, as we know, Pratama has been pretty much unbeatable everywhere we've gone to this year. Winner of the last two races after that race one disaster in Malaysia, but bounced back in Malaysia to win the race second one race. Race one disaster. Well, Such it was. tabloid. <laughs> it was at the time. <laughs> it and then was, yeah. It the was way he rebounded in race two was absolutely phenomenal to claim the title. Nine wins, Patama is eyeing up there <laughs> as he gives us a cheeky little eyebrow wave to the camera. Here is your starting grid then for the final race of the season. Patama on pole, Ogiwara and Adaki second and third. Azawa's fourth with Patani and Takahira joining him on row two. Puetazan, Hafai and Singapong, the wildcard rider for the third time this year, rounding out row three. Melandri, Gading and Rasaidan are on row four with Aushuti, the home hero, leading row five with Bin Laden and Darwizi on row five with him. Row six, Chavan, Nicholas. Watch out for Nicholas. He finished P4 yesterday despite starting in P17, the number 12 Australian. So do watch out for him with Russo and Putra completing the grid. So we're nearly ready to get underway here from the final race of the season. What a season it's been and hopefully we're going to go out with a mighty bang in this race. I'm sure we will, but if Patama's got anything to say, especially with his qualifying pace, he'll be wanting to break the mould as Al Zahuti then has had a oh problem no. on the grid, the Qatari Heartbreak. rider. 
I Let's think he see might then. have just stalled it. Possibly, he... yeah. He seems to have realised very quickly before they've all set off as well, so not sure. Hopefully he Let's can get the bike see. going. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, has, I think yeah. he's moving by himself there, yeah, you can see. So that's a bit of a heartbreaker then. So yeah, hopefully then he'll be able to get in this race and no harm done with that little, what we will assume is an error. If we're wrong, we're sorry. Uh, but looked like the bike was okay and uh, moving down pit lane. So then, out on the warm up lap at least then, no dramas. So good news for the number 23. Safety car just like letting him through. Um, and he's not too far off the back of the pack either. So what are we expecting from this one then? Do we think, we were talking yesterday about Pratama, his calling card a few times in terms of tactics has been to like stay in the group, stay, you know, out of trouble, but very much fight it out in the front group. And then the last sort of five, four, three laps really pull the pin and disappear. Yesterday he wasn't able to do that, but he did have that incredible advantage in qualifying. Will he be able to do that in this race where the conditions are a little bit different? Or have those on the chase had a lot more track time obviously with that race yesterday time to look over the data and see where they were losing out talk to their coaches obviously the whole idea of the atc and the road to motor gp is also to improve are they going to be able to catch him what do you think yeah yesterday he was clearly pushing in the early exchanges he made a little bit of an error i think it was through turn 12 or 13 one of the fast right handers just got a little bit too much on the inside of the curb did patama a little bit of a scare when he was being chased by Adaki and Ogiwara. Clearly knows he's got the pace to win. He won yesterday, but it was very, very close. He was third into the final corner. If he can, of course, he will break clear and try and win this race for Tama. But if he can't, like he did yesterday, then he's just going to settle down into a rhythm. He's used to winning, of course, in the Asia Talent Cup. He knows what it takes and he knows how to battle his way in a group fight at the front as the number seven. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Here's a reminder of your championship standings. Look at Patama's dominance this year. 90 points clear of Puetzan and then how close it is between second, third and fourth there. Puetzan, Adaki and Matani. Like you said, Fran, Matani and Puetzan were in that sort of second group behind Ozawa, who was in between the lead group and the second group group behind so for those riders they'll be wanting to try and stick with the leaders as much as possible this race and try and stand on the podium if not more for the final race of the season they will indeed so here we go then looking ready to go <laughs> is uh, Pratama so very different second race then here in Qatar and I think Hamad Al Sahuti has made it around the warm up lap with no drama, so it looks like it was just a little bit of an error there from the Qatari rider ahead of that. Hopefully, then he won't have any more in this race and can make some progress. So I think, yeah, he's at the back of the grid. So let's see what awaits us. Yeah, there we go. Graphics confirming it. Here we go, then, Elk. The lights took a while to come on yesterday, but Rez will be up very, very shortly indeed, and we will be set to begin race two of the weekend and the final race of the season in the Asia Talent Cup. They're taking a while to come on yet again today. Here they are then, the red lights are on, the revs are up, and we are underway for race two, and it once again is a great start from pole position for Vader Pratama on the number seven. Is that Ogiwara that's tucked up right behind him on the 16? Yes, it is, using the slipstream down into turn one, but it is going to be Pratama Pretizan on the number 20. What a start for the tie rider, Currently second place in the standings. He is up to third from the third row of the grid. So a great start from Fuetsan, but Pratama leads from Ogiwara. Yeah, they're really teasing us there with the lights, weren't they? And then they were so quick to go off once they come on as well. But great reaction times, like you said, from Pratama. As ever, the Indonesian really solid start. Great start from Ogiwara. And like you say, Puetasan really moving forward quickly there, the number 20. But you can see there's already a few metres between him and Ogiwara. And Adaki looking very impatient there, trying to get back through. He'll know after yesterday he's got the pace to run at the front and maybe has a few more doubts about Puetasan. Uh, Azawa as well looking for a move but Adaki makes it stick now he just needs to try and defend that and get back onto the rear wheel of Ogiwara yeah good move down at turn six from Adaki like you say Fran he knows he's got the pace to go with these two at the front and as you can see already Pratama has got his head down and he's trying to get into his rhythm nice and early Pressan didn't have the pace yesterday to go with the leaders Azara on the number 21 also knows he's got 
decent pace. He couldn't quite hang on to the lead group yesterday. He made a mistake at the final corner in the early exchanges, and that ultimately cost him a chance of going with the top three. But Adaki making an important move already. You can see how much he's pulled on Fetizan as they come out of turn 10 through the fast kink at turn 11, then into the really fast right-handers of 12, 13 and 14 towards the end of the lap. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be interesting what happens with the slipstream down that straight as well. Pratama very wide there, not too wide, but very wide. Uh, but yeah, Adaki then able to not only take that third position, but also start to home in on those ahead. And now Mitani as well, making a move to move forward. But whoa, it's a little bit dramatic there. And Puerto San ends up very wide off the track. But you can see already they've concertinaed up around here. And I'm sure the slipstream and then down into turn one is going to see plenty more shuffle again. End of lap one then here for race two, the final race of the season. It is Pratama leading the way from Ogiwara and Araki. Your top three for most of yesterday's running is the top three in the early exchanges. Takahira using the slipstream, going outside of the paint there to try and overtake the number 20 of Puetsan. Losing places after a good start is Puetsan. That's Azara on the 21, diving up the inside. And Matani says, thank you very much. I'll have a piece of that as well down into turn one. So Matani making moves early on. Takahira also, and Azara is now leading the way in that group as they go into turn two. But what is the gap for? And it's already up to over a second across the line between the top three, which has constantly up again, like they did yesterday. And now it's Takahira at the lead of that group. So they've got to get the head down and get into a nice rhythm. They have. So, oh, there was a big moment. So, also, Pratama then was the first to head very, very wide there. And then Puetisan obviously doing the same. Uh, I don't think maybe we're blind, but I don't think we quite saw that as clearly first time around on the live. So, thank you very much, TV Gods, for that replay. So, very, very close then between that front trio at the front. And it looks like Azawa has cut that gap a little bit. We saw the number 21 initially able to do that yesterday as well, before a bit of a moment kind of ended up leaving him in some clear air just a bit of a no man's land in fourth until that final corner drama but so far then it looks like he's been able to oh, i don't know it changes corner by corner doesn't it but at the moment then the number 21 will know he's got to try exactly what he did yesterday but this time pull it off an early scare then from Pratama. the cameras are focused on the grip behind we didn't see Pratama losing the front end down at turn 15 it's the first time they flick it left for a, a long time and it was on the opening lap of course and maybe the left hand side of the side wasn't quite up to temperature for Patama last time around but an early scare we did wonder what his tactics would be on the number seven Patama and I think his tactics were to push immediately and try and break the group but a little bit of a scare at this corner turn 15 has probably just woken him up a bit and he's had a moment again on the second lap and so does Takahira, Puesan wide, Nicholas wide as well in the background so they're all constituted up now, they've bunched up, Patama making a couple of mistakes at turn 15 in two laps and now the top four is locked together, the top sort of seven is pretty much locked together now. A few mistakes though, they're clearly pushing in the early exchanges as we complete lap two. Yeah, they are indeed. So anyone wondering about track limits until we get another dramatic moment here, it's only the parts painted green that count as track limits. And that doesn't include the lovely bits of green in the runoff designs here in Qatar. It's the bits right next to the track that are green. So in theory, they should have all been a bit penalized by uh, those errors there, but they've all gathered it back up. Pratama's still in the lead and managing to defend it there. But as you can see though, fastest lap last time around was Ezawa, and he is now right in this group as everything settles down again after that uh, trip to the, well, group trip <laughs> onto the runoff. Yeah, Pratama then, another scare on lap two, and Azawa managed to get the job done on lap one on Puetazan, and just broken the grid behind him, Azawa. This is sort of what he did yesterday, but then he made a mistake, didn't he, at the final corner, got too much onto the kerb into the braking zone, ran wide, lost a good second and a half to two seconds, then ultimately he wasn't able to catch the group back up, but he is with them, the number 21. Said yesterday that he was very lucky to finish on the podium, wasn't too happy at all. Obviously happy to be on the podium, but that's not the way Azar wants to finish on the podium. He's benefiting from a crash. This is then what happened last Everyone time Everyone except Ogiwara was off the track there. Yeah, clearly pushing on. <laughs> so they? they really are, yes. Only the number 16. You can see he made it work as well. Gained a few metres there, did Ogiwara. But yeah, obviously... Uh, 
yeah, a few incidents there then so far. Let's see how it goes next time around. But we can see then a bit of daylight at the moment back to Adaki. I'm sure that will disappear again with that slipstream effect. But Mitani, it was doing some great work and seemed to have made some real progress into that gap up to Azawa, but now just seems to have dropped back a little bit again. So let's see if that trio, you can see the number two is Mitani, just that trio off the back of the Azawa Adaki duel is what it's becoming. But uh, yeah, I think Puetisan though seems to have uh, started to fade off this group now after that scare. And you can see they've got the 12 of Nicholas for company and Hamad Al Sahuti on an absolute charge from the back now up to 10th place. I think that's further ahead than he was at this point in the race yesterday from his qualifying position. So great job from the local rider so far. Yeah, good stuff from Al Sahuti. Obviously he would have been a little bit flustered after making the mistake or something that won at least on the grid before the start. It was looking to start from P13, but ultimately had to start from the back of the grid. So good job so far. We said watch out for Nicholas. He's made great ground again, but he's with Puetizan who's just dropped out of the sort of league group, league couple of groups. So Puetizan second in the championship standings as things stand, remember. Well, as things stand, he's probably not now. We've not got the live graphic, but, but Puetizan, you remember, is... You mean you can't do the maths that quickly? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Puetizan is holding P2 before this race, but if things Could finish as they are... a bit of an expensive one, couldn't um, it? Yes. He's not going to finish P2 in the overall standing. He's a long way to go, of course. Batama still leading the way from Ogiwara, just keeping his powder dry is on the... Ogiwara, sorry, on the number 16. Just trying to probably work out where Batama is his strong way potentially is weak he followed him a lot yesterday of course in number 16 but i think he's just he's just comfortable following patama doesn't need to lead the race at this stage eight and a half laps to go a long long way to go of course and he's probably just keeping his powder dry sitting there pretty happy he's not being challenged from behind at the minute this is the number 16 as the duo falls slightly clear of adaki and azara not sure if something happened between the two japanese riders behind but they have lost ground on this lap side yeah they have a little bit also not sure how they lost that many meters whether it's just a case of obviously there's so many battles throughout the field we've been focusing on others as well but uh, yeah there is a significant gap now between the 16 of Ogiwara the 14 of Adaki we've got two duels at the front and then we've got Mitani leading that what is still a trio I think yep it is indeed um, trying to chase down that fight for third as it is at the moment ahead of them but yeah I don't know I'm intrigued so far by this race uh, I thought we may have either a Patama breakaway or a bit of a bigger group. Again, uh, track is uh, actually not optional. <laughs> but uh, obviously, yeah, bit of a challenge there. You can see they must be really pushing on to be uh, making that mistake a few times. But like I said, it's not green, so it's not track limits. Let's see what happens then in this duel into turn one. Does Azawa think he's got more pace than Adaki? If yes, he'll likely try and attack. If no, maybe he'll tuck in. They need to uh, start chasing down that lead duo. But let's see. He's going for it. Yeah, I think at this stage, Azawa, as he moves up the inside at turn one, probably thinks he has the pace to try and claw back the disadvantages they've found themselves in. But all this battling away between the duo of Adaki and Azawa is costing them time, unfortunately. They've just got to box clever in the next few laps because that lead with Patama setting the fastest lap of the race at 2.11.3. Ogiwara just a tenth slower at 2.11.4. Both setting their personal best laps of the race. You can see their confirmation as Azawa then dives up the inside at turn four. Probably going to give the rear end of his machine a little tap, as we so often see, just to say to the rider behind, <laughs> stick behind me. And that always works as well, so yeah, it makes it, sense they always do it. <laughs> <laughs> it almost never works, of course. We, do we love jest. it, though. We love it. You've got to try. Always got to give it a go. Oh, I was close um, to the background. Yes, it was indeed. So are we going to see a move from Adaki then? It's an interesting conundrum, this. Because, you know, if you really do think you are faster, I'm sure it must feel overwhelmingly frustrating to be the rider behind but Adaki did have a while to try and make some inroads into that leading duo and he wasn't able to so let's see what Azawa's got at the moment just able to keep the number 14 behind him but we're going to get a replay it's gonna be. so it's into turn one then I think it's just a nice slow-mo yeah it's just a nice slow-mo of your race leader champion and eight-time winner so far this season Veda Pratama nice and tidy around there yeah just settled into his rhythm now hasn't he Pratama 
A classic turn one slow-mo here at the LaSalle International Circuit. Back with the leaders. These are live pictures as Azawa and Adaki both run off at turn 15 again. How many times have we seen that so far in the opening few laps? Yeah, I'd like to count how many people have done a lap on the track <laughs> around there at turn 15 because certainly of the top sort of seven, eight, nine riders, it's only really Ogiwara that we've seen nail it so far. So great job from the number 16. But yeah, like you said, it's not considered an advantage at all. So no problem. Um, if they go through there a bit cleaner, they should go through there a bit quicker. So that's the challenge to just try and keep it in line here. But obviously all pushing on so hard. This battle continues then. Azawa's still ahead of it, but that gap is pretty significant now, isn't it? Between the duel for the lead and the duel for third position. I would say, unless there's absolute fireworks at the front, it looks like we're going to have a two-rider fight for this victory today. Yeah, 211.5 for the leader, 211.4 for Ogiwara, the fastest rider on track. Last time around was the rider in second place. And Azara and Adaki were in the two minute twelves and some 1.2, 1.3 seconds slower than Patama and Ogiwara last time around. You can see there on your screen as the gap just continues to grow. This is the fight behind Takahira, Mitani and Hafai. Hafai on the number 19, the Malaysian, crashed out of podium contention last round in Malaysia unfortunately we had a great ride back there and he's having a good ride again is Hafai taking it to the two Japanese riders but yeah I think Fran you are right Patama and Ogiwara are just setting a pace that no one else is able to match it'll be interesting to see if Azara and Zaki can just stop the battling for a couple of laps to see what lap times they are able to set but these two here that we're watching on screens are well over a second quicker per lap than anyone else yeah, at this moment in time. They've gone, haven't they? They seem to have checked out. And it's over two and a half seconds now, that gap between these two and then those on the chase. So could be an interesting one. There's still seven laps to go after, the, well, six laps to go after this one. So, uh, yeah, this could be a fascinating duel to the finish. And Ogiwara, certainly, it doesn't look like it's costing him too much to stay with Patama at this stage. So, great job from the number 16. This is now the closest fight. Uh, and Takahira's got past Mitani as well. It was the number two who's leading that charge for quite a while in this trio. Do we want to call it third group? Does two count as a group? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, Mitani, though, immediately listening to me say that and thinks, no, I'll take it back, actually. So the number two back into the lead of this little trio. Let's see what happens at turn one, though, because I'm sure there will be a shuffle once more. Six laps to go, then, in the final race of the season. Hafai on the 19, pulls out of the slipstream and tries to make a two-in-one move down at turn one. Has he got the job done? It looks like he has. Matani late on the brakes on the number two. He's going to dive at the inside of Takahira. There is your live championship standings. Ignore Pratama. He is already the champion. It's second, third and fourth you've got to look out for. At the moment, as things stand, Adaki on the 14 will be taking it by three points over Ogiwara. Ogiwara, of course, is in the lead group with Pratama. So if Ogiwara can claim his first win of the season, then that could hand him second place in the overall standings. Partizan, unfortunately, losing out on the number 20 as things stand. Partizan down in ninth place across the line. He's embroiled in a, a good battle with Nicholas with Al Sahuti. A couple of seconds adrift in P10, the Katai rider. But yeah, keep an eye on those graphics. We'll have them pop up or stay there for the last five and a half laps. It's going to be an interesting watch. Adaki on the number 14, who we're homing in on here, currently holds it the silver medal spot. He does indeed. But yeah, another shout out then for Nicholas, who's come up from P17 on the grid again to be done let out with Puetasan now over that eighth position. But I don't know, I mean, he is two places behind him and it was likely his own little error on the grid, but I think slightly upstaged in terms of a comeback by Al Sahuti today, who's, like you said, just holding that top 10 position at the moment and with a bit of, uh, bit of distance behind him as well. So... What's what's gonna is that I was gonna say this looks like a replay, but then the little replay thing took a little minute to appear. Uh, so this duel, I think, is going to be an interesting one all the way to the end as well. And that for the win as well is Ogiwara obviously will know that he can take that second position. And these two, I mean, motivation is so high, especially oh, bit of a. Bit of a mistake there from the number seven of Pratama in the race lead. Managed to gather it up and stay ahead. But Agiwara, you'd be able to see, you can see the slipstream there perfectly as the number 16 is just able to make up those meters tucked in behind the number seven. But yeah, no drama then, but not 
absolute perfection from Potama. Still the little ray of hope for Ogiwara there. He's trying to stay with him into the final laps of this race. And it's all going pretty well for the number 16 so far. And here, Adaki back through into third position then. So, yeah, like I said, motivation will be so, so high. Not only is it always, but also in the final race of the season and for those in the battle for that silver medal, as you said, there's uh, plenty on the line here. And I think it might be Takahira who's, yeah, back at the head of that trio behind these guys as well, um, the number nine. So three close battles in the front here and then that duel as well, Nicholas and Puetta-san, that's pretty close still. Don't want to call it really. But five laps to go. This could be crunch time in terms of whether Ogiwara can stay with Putama right to the end of the race based on what we've seen from the Indonesian before. This will be when he's got that margin in his pocket. He'll be pulling it out and deciding to put the hammer down. So let's see what happens. Yeah, to me, Ogiwara looks like the more comfortable of the two. We've seen Putama make a few mistakes already in this race, running wide at the final corner on the last lap, last time around. Four and a half laps to go. We've got a duel at the front between Putama and Ogiwara. This is the duel we're focused on at the moment for third and fourth as we switch back to the leaders through turn 12. Then through turn 13, the fast right-handers here that bring you towards turn 15 and then ultimately turn 16. Three consecutive really fast right-handers, pretty much full gas on these Honda 250 NSFR machines. Ogiwara still keeping close tabs on Patama. Get them round four laps to go in the 2023 season once they round this final corner. Patama though, looks like he's just built a little bit of an advantage, not too much to worry about. Um, but I think Ogiwara will just get tucked up into the slipstream and use it to great effect. Just claw back a tenth or two down the home straight. As a reminder, they've just clocked through it there with four laps to go. The finish line has been moved back several hundred metres from the end of the straight towards the start of the straight, which, Fran, does make a bit of a difference in terms of last lap and coming out the final corner. You used to want to probably be second, maybe even third to get a double slipstream. But nowadays, you, you want to be coming out the final corner in the lead with a at least a tenth in hand yeah i'd say so it's an interesting conundrum now isn't it i think i've used the word conundrum on today's broadcast more than i ever have before in my life it's obviously my official word of the day but yeah it's an interesting decision now that you have to make uh, especially on these smaller machines where that slipstream is worth so so much uh, where you do position yourself going into the final corner and it's not just about that either you've also got to get it right whichever position you decide you think you can make work so yeah definitely uh, something to look out for especially after these guys have already had one crack at it yesterday as well they do have that experience under their belts now but i don't know i think uh, in the end it'll mostly come down to send it and see absolutely and sending it on the last lap was Patama because he just set the fast lap of the race at 211.3 wagiwara a 211.4 just over a tenth slower, and then the owner of the rider is really in the two, well, the only other rider in the two minutes 12, a second down was Takahira. That's Ahmed Dar Wizi, the Malaysian rider who has crashed. Can't quite make out where that is. Potentially mm. at turn one, is that Fram? Can't Possibly. quite see. Let's have a look now then. Oh. Ah, he's not crashed. He's had a bit of a mechanical, unfortunately. There's the number 17. So not the way he would have ended, of like to have ended the season. It was turn one, so the- Good eye, good eye. The bike has unfortunately just said no more towards the end of the front straight. So, this yeah, is interesting, though. That, that is disappointing, obviously, for him. Bit of a heartbreaker. But this duel is interesting because, like you said, Patama set that fastest lap and uh, Ogiwara was a tenth off it. But now the number 16 looks closer than he has been for quite some time. And as you can see, tucked up much earlier on the straight this time and even pulling out the slipstream as well, not needing it to get back on terms with Patama, but actually needing to kind of move out the way so that he's not running into the back of the number seven. Absolutely glued together, these two now. And it's three laps to go, so it's two more after this one they've just started. And these two as well, still close as ever in the duel for third.
Yeah, two fantastic battles playing out here with three laps to go. This is the fight for the final podium of the race and of the season in P3. Adaki needs all the points he can get to try and finish in second in the overall standing. Dazawa isn't in that fight, not how to win this season unless something happens at the front. It's not going to happen, unfortunately, in the final race of the season for Azar, but he'll be desperate to stand on the podium and not just benefit from a rider's crash in front of him. As I said, he was disappointed yesterday to be handed the podium in the way that he did. He was yeah, massively frustrated that he couldn't go with the leaders. This is a replay then through turn 15 and <laughs> once again, as he has done at least two or three times now in this race, not just, him, just running wide. To be fair, not just him. Everyone except the number 16. <laughs> but yeah, that's interesting then. And certainly for Ogiwara, that will give him um, some heart as he uh, sticks behind the number seven, seeing that, yeah, there are those still those little... Uh, Little mistakes here and there, nothing major. And again, number seven managed to gather it up, keep that race lead as well, and uh, no harm done. But yeah, just a little bit scrappier from a few riders today, and surprisingly, including our already reigning champion. So, Ogiwara, still looking, like you say, he looks relaxed, doesn't he? The number 16, looks like it's not, a bit of the bubble there as well. Looks like it's not costing him too much to just stay with Pratama at the moment. And we, uh, yeah, we don't have that many kilometers now to go. I think this is going to go right to the wire here. Unless maybe if Ogiwara thinks he's even got more speed, maybe he'll make a move and then really try and pull out a few tenths. Interesting to see what Ogiwara does here. We've not said this often at all this season, but Pratama, out of the two at the front, or whoever's been at the front, looks the more flustered. It looks like he's trying a little bit harder to set the, the lap times he is compared to the number 16 of Ogiwara. Ogiwara then tucked up in the slipstream, pulls to the outside. Pratama going a little bit defensive, but will make his way across to the racing line. Not this time around for Ogiwara. Late on the brakes, a little bit close for comfort, but all under control. Pratama a little bit wide, but he'll pull it back to a late apex. Now then, in the race for P3, Adaki currently holds it from Ozawa. This is changing lap by lap, but watch out for Takahira on the number nine machine. He is closing in. Yeah, what was the really last quickly lap as time well. they set? Uh, Takahira was, yeah, nearly a second faster than the duo ahead of him, so I'm not sure if Azara and Adaki, we missed something between the pairing. Potentially we have because they are overtaking each other, sorry. Lap by lap, corner by corner. And I think that was Adaki going up the inside of Azawa at turn four. But we focus back upon the leaders. A fascinating fight for the final podium spot playing out. But with one and a half laps to go, it's still Patama from Ogiwara. Where is Ogiwara going to make his move from? It's going to be an interesting one to watch, isn't it? Because like we said, the number 16 looks pretty chill there in second place. Um, but yeah, really great final charge then from Takahira. Let's see if he can really get into that battle and take a spot on the podium. Yeah, he's right with them now. It's the number nine with the orange helmet that's Takahira. Uh, so he's made up an awful lot of distance so, so quickly on this duo. Let's see what he's got now then because time is running out to try and get past two riders. Uh, but for sure, they've got another shot down the slipstream soon. Maybe he can make that work for him. And if he's able to keep this pace up as well, should be able to gap them. And he's going for a two-in-one. Oh, what a move. Thanks and bye. Lovely stuff there from uh, Takahira then. Just obviously really in that rhythm, just has a bit more speed, arrives on the scene, immediately makes that move. Let's see now if he can get the hammer down and keep them behind him then. But at the front, it's as you were. Some nice high-speed chest today, isn't it, from these two? And all close to the edge, but not over it this time from the number seven of Pratama. This is it then. Here we go. Last lap time in the Asia Talent Cup for 2023. Pratama takes the a different line on the outside, down the front straight, trying to break the slick stream of Ogiwara. Ogiwara not quite able to do it down into turn one. That's the first passing manoeuvre done, but there is plenty on this LaSalle International Circuit. Pratama a little bit squirrely on the exit there, and it's a three-way fight for the final podium spot. Adaki holds it into turn one. Takahira demotes from P3 to P5 in a matter of a couple of corners. Remember, Takahira is after his first podium since the the opening round in Malaysia. He so desperately wants that podium does the number nine, but so does Adaki and so does Azawa. Yeah, absolutely. So then Takahira wasn't able to make that gap, certainly enough to fend them off in the slipstream. So let's see what the number nine has got on the rest of the lap, lap last lap. But at the front then, 
Oh, <laughs> yep, yeah, that looked like it could be a move on, but not quite. Ogiwara still in that second place. Is he waiting? Has he not been able to find that gap? What do we think is going to happen in this duel? The number 16 has some big decisions to make here because at least as the leader, yes, you've got to make sure the door's shut, but you've also mainly just got to put in the cleanest, fastest lap you possibly can. I think it's all going to come down to the final corner, Fran. As we mentioned, the finish line is much closer. The battle for third rages on. The finish line is much closer to turn 16. If you make a lunge up the inside at the final corner and manage to get a decent run out of the final corner, you're going to win the race. Takahira very close to Ozawa on the inside there at turn 9 into turn 10. Another passing place has been and gone. It's currently a Daki from Ozawa from Takahira in the podium fight. Takahira just wide on the exit. That might have cost him time, but here we go then the leaders are through turns 11 and 12 this is turn 14 and this is turn 15 where Batam has made a few mistakes already this race but no mistakes as of yet through turn 15 for Izawa keeps it on the straight and narrow but this is turn 16 the last lap of the last race of the season Ogiwara diving up the inside no not quite this time around now it's all about who can get the power down and get it on the run to the line Batama just keeps it inside on the black stuff Pratama is he going to win break the slipstream Ogiwara tries but it is Pratama for the ninth time this season who wins in the Asia Talent Cup what a race between the top two and this is the podium fight for Anazawa currently leading it Adaki and Takahira close Anazawa pulls to the outside who's going to win I think it's going to be Adaki who wins the fight for third place it is Adaki who claims third place from Takahira and Anazawa who was third out of the final corner finishes P5 what a race Fran, what a way to end the season. It was indeed, and it's still going on as well. These guys then almost three abreast. That's going to be a photo finish, I think. Uh, just looking at the timing screens, no idea who, who took that. 0.034 between the three of them. So it's Nicholas Poitisant and Al Sahuti then completing the top 10 from the back after that mistake and having to start from the back. But yeah, what an incredible finish to that race. And two perfect conflicting examples of what you can do at the final corner and how you can make it work. Adaki just able to make that slipstream work and steal that third position, get back on the podium after his heartbreak yesterday. And Takahira, oh sorry, Takahira, Ogiwara not quite able to open that door or force it open and then not quite able to beat him on the run to the line either. But an incredible race from the number 16. Great stuff. Always great to see a battle right to the wire, and we got plenty there, didn't we? The entire top 10 was decided right at the line there uh, in their own little gaps. So, great stuff from the ATC once again. Fantastic race from this rider, the number seven, Veda Pratama. Great recovery from uh, some heartbreak yesterday from Eamon Adaki to get that final place on the podium. And shout out to Ogiwara. That was a really impressive day's work from the number 16 to stay right with Pratama to the end of that race and so very nearly steal it too. Adaki then with that third place has picked up second in the overall standings. He came into this weekend second in the overall standings. Lost it yesterday after a crash at the final corner, but he has responded very well as Adaki on the number 14. That scrap for the final podium place going the way of Adaki has handed him second in the championship standings in 2023. A fine ride from Adaki all season long. Unfortunately, no one had an answer for Pratama. You can see their confirmation. Pratizan, unfortunately, coming into this race, second will end the 2023 season down in fourth with Ogiwara and Adaki moving ahead of him. Ogiwara, big mover there. Unfortunately, not quite enough for him to finish second in the standings. Pratama, though, what a season, Fran. Another victory, say, expertly done as well. Look at that. I mean, imagine Pratama's not there. It's one of the closest finishes to the season ever, that. Incredibly close in that battle for second. But the number seven, Veda Pratama, the Indonesian rider, has just had a little something extra uh, on plenty of occasions this season and has really set a benchmark. And that's a useful benchmark for the rest too. This the replay. The podium position overtake into turn one. So this is Adaki getting through. I would argue that it was actually one over the line. But uh, <laughs> no, it's a good move there from the number 14. Oh, did we get any drama here? Because there's some uh, quite conflicting trajectories going on there. But no harm done. Oh, just keeps it inside oh, yes. at turn 15, didn't he, Pratama? We were watching this live, of course, and then I thought Adaki 
he was pretty much alongside him. Sorry, it's Ogiwara on the 16, not Adaki. I thought We've Ogiwara was... wrong named him twice now I between was, us. Sorry, Ryota. Oh, and Patama just keeps it inside there, does he? Yes, he does. You can see as well the angle of the edge of that curb. Like you said, it's not painted green. But if you go over that, you're going to lose out more than what you won the race by. So that was really yeah. a decisive thing there for Pratama to be able to keep it in the lines. There is the run to the line. Trying to break that slipstream and doing so successfully as well, just enough. Yeah, proof there, if you'd come out the final corner, you are in a commanding position to win the race. It sounds simple, but at a sale international circuit, we're not used to that being the case, but it is also proof as we trip over each other in the commentary box. Uh, not sure we've got a graphic of Mir there. You can watch the Repsol Honda rider later on in the race that's coming up. Of course, a huge race coming up in the MotoGP World Championship. Moto3 and Moto2 before it as well. A nice way to kick things off, Fran, as it was always going to be in the Age Talent Cup. Yeah, um, it's always good stuff, event. isn't it? Obviously, great racing in the ATC for these guys and also to watch for you around the world joining us. And a fantastic and important step on the road to MotoGP, making sure that if you've got talent, you can use that, you can come, you can race, and you don't need a big wallet and you don't need to be based too far away from where you're from either. The idea is to try and make an entire network of global opportunities for these guys to be able to show what they've got and then build careers from it. It's going pretty well so far for these as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fantastic <laughs> setup is the Asian Talent Cup. We have the selection event for the 2024 season back in Malaysia. 10 riders being selected there, including Singapong, who finished P13. He's finished in the points as the Thai rider every single time he's raced this season. He had a wild card in Thailand, um, and then he's been on the grid in Malaysia and in Qatar as well. So good stuff from Singapong, who will be with us full time next year, and fully deservedly so. Just looking down the timing screens, Bin Laden. P14 as well inside the points. Double that points finish. That is an finish. impressive. Very impressive. Weekend, yeah, from the Saudi Arabian rider. I think he was, was he 10th yesterday? I've gone purely from memory, not looked uh, immediately at the screen. But yeah, really good stuff. P10, top 10 on your debut. That ain't a bad day's work. And then on the second time out, getting some more points. Really impressive from the Saudi Arabian. So, waiting for... We see the sunglasses are back as well. Just about to say the Vader same Pratama. thing. They are, they, they really do call attention, don't they? Yeah, I in hope the, they the stay with way. Vader for years and years to come. Yeah. That's his little signature it's already podium celebration, decided, isn't it? It's already decided, isn't it? You can see the KTM guys there making a bit of a branding nightmare for Honda, the single supplier to the ATC. But no, we love the... Uh, Roshoy Armour down there as well. I was going to say the famous faces who usually drop in to do some congratulating. So 2000 and, be great if I got this wrong, nine 250 champion. Final 250 champion, of course, before it changed to Moto2. And now we will get the podium. Certainly will. And the Indonesian national anthem will ring around again for the ninth time this season. And, and it's, it's for the ninth great... time, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah, Frank. genuinely, it's been a fantastic revelation. Obviously, we've heard it before, but this season, getting it so often in the ATC after the incredible success of Veda Pratama, it's a pleasure to listen to. We absolutely love it. If you haven't tuned in all season and you're thinking of just turning off and making a cup of tea or whatever you're doing, um, stick around for the National Anthem because it might become your new favourite. Trust me. Um, that stiff competition, the there, likes of the Marseillais. Of and yeah. I think it's right up there. Italy, though. Italy's given you side eye. <laughs> Top three. I won't say it's number one yet, you're not but it's, rank it's them. close, it's close. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get the final podium in the way very shortly indeed. The riders just waiting backstage and they will come out, spray the fizzy water, and then it's job done until well, they go to the room to be interviewed by yours truly, and then it is job done. They'll enjoy the rest of the race day here in Qatar. As we say, a massive day coming up in the MotoGP World Championship fight. I'm sure if you're tuning into this, you're looking forward to the day ahead. 
Jorge Martin versus Peko Banyaya. Oh, you couldn't just use the hashtag the right way around to go with the points. Hashtag Peko versus Martin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, awesome pit building, as you can see. I mean, the whole paddock, you can see a little, little glimpse of it behind to the left of your screens as well with the cool kind of... What do we call them? They're lights, but they're not just lights, are they? They're awesome kind of flying saucers that we have throughout the paddock. Very cool. Uh, and then the, the buildings themselves. Really great job remodeling this Lucille International Circuit or more the facility around the circuit. Track is the same but resurfaced with some beautiful paintwork as well. So here we go then. You can see just the left of your screen. It's go time. So Eamon Adaki then will be first out into third position. Number 14. And then Ogiwara, so close. It was 0 0.010 over the line. Just unbelievably close finish. And then winner for the ninth time in 2023, Veda Pratama from Indonesia. Takes to the top step. Getting pretty used to that by now, isn't he? And it's Dorna CEO Carmelo Espaleta then, who is going to present the trophies. So the third place to Adaki. Certainly a lot happier after a podium result than yesterday with that late heartbreak. Second place to Ogiwara. Maybe a little bit less. Looks a little bit disappointed, isn't it? Yeah, me? you would be, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm very competitive. I wouldn't take that well. Understandably so. <laughs> But there Pratama go, then. then, he would have packed, I'm sure, enough space for a couple of trophies because he knows he's, he's used to get doing some. it. And he, yeah, he probably knew he was going to get them as well. But it is the time for Indonesian National Anthem for the ninth time this season. Told you it was about uh, the ninth time this season the Indonesian national anthem rings around the circuit here and the second time this weekend around the LaSalle International Circuit. Great to see Indonesian fans coming to Qatar. A shame about the top they were wearing, unfortunately. The wrong sort of motorsport, but we'll let him off this time around. <laughs> here we go then. Final results of the race, Veda Pratama, as we said, just 0.010 back to Ogiwara in second place. Adaki completing the podium after defeating Takahira and Izawa in that battle for third place. Then Mitani with a little bit of breathing space ahead of Hafi and Nicholas then coming out on top in another close fight against Puetisan after that early scare on track for the number 20 and Hamad Al Sahuti completing the top 10 on home turf from the very back of the grid after stalling just ahead of the warm-up lap. Then we've got Gading, Raziadan, Singapong, Bin Laden and Melandri completing the point scorers here in race two at the Qatar Airways Grand Prix of Qatar. I'm not going to read every single name out, it goes very quickly, but congratulations to everyone who's competed in the cup this season. And a bit of a heartbreaker, the only non-finish there in the last time out was a technical issue for Darwisi, the Malaysian rider. So here we are then, final championship standings. 
And it's Veda Pratama who takes it with quite a gap, as you can see. Adaki taking that second place after that very close battle against Ogiwara and Puetisan. With Zenmatani not too far back either. Then we've got Takahira, Ezawa, Al Sahuti, and Hafi in the top nine. You can see some bigger gaps there as there's been a real group of solid front runners this season. Marianas Nicholas completing the top 10, the Australian, and then Putra Razyadan moving up three places there in the final race of the year. And then Chessy Melandri, Fadilla, Russo, Singapong, and Darwisi there unable to add to his point score today. Sadly, he was the rider with that technical issue. One Moon, Gading, Chavan, Putra, Rab Ramadipa, Alma, Bin Laden getting some good points from this weekend to move into that standings in 24th and then Tana Chot as the final scorer. Here's your highlights then for the final race of the season. Pratama, for the fourth time this year, started from pole position as he so often does. Got a great launch to grab the whole shot into turn one. And as we saw yesterday, very quickly it became a lead group of three. But the chasers did stick around for a little bit more time than they did in race one before the top two of Pratama and Ogiwara broke clear. The fight for the podium went down to the wire for a large part of it. It was between these two, Azawa and Nadaki, the two Japanese riders. This was the fight for the race win though. Pratama looking for his ninth win of the season. Ogiwara looking for his first. This was on the final lap between the chasers for the final spot on the podium. Takahira diving up the inside, a great move. Two for one move down at turn 12. And then this, in fact, was the last lap down at Turn 1. Three riders all fighting it out for the podium. Adaki, Azawa and Takahira. This, though, was the final corner between the race leader of Pratama and Ogawara in second place. Ogawara thought about a lunge up the inside. Didn't quite prevail this time around and Pratama just about held it to the line to win his ninth race of the season. Ogiwara finished at a close second and in the end, a third place for Adaki on the number 14, handed him second in the overall standings. What a two races we've had, what a season we've had in the Age Talent Cup. Pratama holds the number one finger up in the air. He is the number one in 2023. Thank you for tuning in this year. It's been a belter. We will see you around the corner. Bye for now.